a murderer is on the loose. All police have are fibers and a tire print. Can they find the killer before he strikes again? Can science prove that this painting is a lost Da Vinci worth millions? Should the art world believe it? Guilty. An innocent man is convicted. Can DNA testing save him from life in prison? Next on Discover Magazine. killer is taunting the police by leaving the strangled bodies of his victims in plain view. Detectives and forensic specialists come up with only the tiniest of clues. A few hairs and fibers. And a muddy tire print. lead to the killer. In the summer of 1994, the first victim, LaDonna Jean Steller, is discovered in a vacant lot in Clearwater, Florida. Investigators find no useful evidence at the scene. Stellar had been a known prostitute and crack user, so her murder doesn't draw much attention. It's not uncommon at all for prostitutes to be murdered in this fashion and just dumped alongside the roadway. A few months later, a delivery driver spots something in the weeds on the side of the road. He calls the police. First on the scene is Officer Glenn Ward. Next to arrive is the Pinellas County Forensic Science Unit. These aren't your tire tracks, right, Glenn? No, sir, no. Lieutenant okay. Walt Jakes notices a possible clue, a tire print at the edge of the road. The sandy soil in this part of Florida doesn't usually make for a clear tire print, but rains during the night have left the ground muddy. First, the track is photographed. Then castings are made of selected segments of the track. Dental cement, the same material used by orthodontists, is poured into a metal form. While the cement dries, the team searches the grass for trace evidence. Is there anything that would for us? Using a high-powered light called a luma light, the investigators trace a path to the body. The light reveals substances like fibers, hair, and blood. Well, let's keep moving up and we'll clear this whole pathway in. Let's go right up onto the By body following here. the light, the team won't destroy any evidence along the way. The luma light shines at wavelengths that cause certain materials to fluoresce. Orange goggles help make evidence stand out sharply. Soon the victim is identified. Her name is Wendy Evans. Just like the previous victim, she had been a prostitute. She was killed by strangulation and her body had been left in plain view. Is a serial killer on the loose in Pinellas County? Here in the unit itself, we started talking amongst ourselves that, hey, things are kind of looking serious. We might have a problem on our hands. Evidence collected at the crime scene is sent here to Florida's Department of Law Enforcement. Jerry Serino is the chemist assigned to the case. It can literally take weeks to go through the debris that is recovered from a crime scene. Kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack. Serino looks for things out of the ordinary, unusual colors or materials. 
and he finds something. A pink nylon fiber, most likely from a carpet. Carpet fibers are valuable clues because they can link suspects to a specific location. Carpetings tend not to change as frequently as we change our clothing, so chances of that carpet still being there are very good. Examiners also find hairs on the body, but they aren't human hairs. These short brown hairs belong to a dog. Investigators are disappointed. There's no way they can check out every pink carpet and every dog in this part of Florida. Without other leads, the investigation is stymied. Whoever had committed this crime, I'm sure in their mind, felt that they had done a very good job of removing physical evidence from us. And I'm sure the person was very confident that he was not going to be found because of the lack of physical evidence. There is one piece of evidence left to examine. The tire track. Peter McDonald is a tire track identification expert. Oh, he agrees to help with the case. McDonald begins by studying the photographs taken at the crime scene. When he examines the tread pattern, he recognizes it immediately. It was really a shock. I had designed the tire that was in this picture. In fact, McDonald designed hundreds of tires in the decades he worked for Firestone. This tire, called an ATX, was designed for small pickups and sport utilities. McDonald tells detectives that the tire print at the crime scene was probably left by a small truck riding on a relatively new set of Firestone ATXs. In the following months, two more murders take place. First, the decomposed body of Peggy Darnell is discovered beneath power lines. Then, Cynthia Pugh is found dead behind a dumpster. Both women have been strangled and left in plain view. And both were prostitutes, just like the earlier victims. Examiners find pink fibers and dog hairs on Cynthia Pugh's body, just like the ones on Wendy Evans. Now there is little doubt. A serial killer is murdering streetwalkers in Pinellas County. The only hope of stopping him is to find the driver that left that tire print. But how? The search starts at the county's main tire dealer, the Don Olson chain. Lieutenant Good pays a visit to manager Larry Morgan. We're investigating a series of homicides over in Pinellas County, and at one of our crime scenes... Good asks Morgan if anyone has recently purchased any ATX tires. Specific tire size that we're looking Morgan for. offers to check the company here, database. The computer shows the tire is sold out. Look at that. We had four, we sold four, September 11th, 1995. The last set was purchased eight months earlier by someone named Terry Howard. Terry Jo Howard is placed under surveillance while detectives check her background. We had found that Terry was also a crack cocaine user. She had had numerous arrests for drugs and she also was a prostitute. And from there we went out and actually found the vehicle parked at her residence one night and were able to confirm that those tires were on that vehicle. Coming up, can forensic scientists track down a serial killer with only a muddy tire print and a few tiny fibers? The next step for the investigators is to examine her tires to see if they can be matched to the print. Detective Good comes up with a plan. For you to call Terry Joe Howard and explain to her that the tires that are on her truck are defective and that way we Since he doesn't have enough evidence for a search warrant, he needs Howard to give up her tires voluntarily. Detective, I'd be happy to do that. 
Hello, Miss Howard. This is Larry Morgan. Uh, we were just notified by the manufacturer that... Morgan tells Howard that her tires have been recalled and she can come in for free replacements. But we've made arrangements. A week later, Howard shows up for her new tires, accompanied by a man. Hi, I'm Terry Joe Howard. You called me about my tires. The switch takes less than five minutes. Howard gets new tires, but now the detectives have her old ones. At a police garage, detectives prepare to make an ink print of the tread patterns on Howard's tires, now mounted on a similar vehicle. A long strip of cardboard is used as an ink pad. The ink is the same kind used for fingerprints. Looks good. Come close. Carefully, the tire is rolled over the ink pad. Okay, go. Are we, are we okay, Sandy? Yeah, go. The tire is then rolled over a clean length of cardboard. Keep it coming. Okay, we're almost there. Once all four tires are printed, the strips will be analyzed. But by now, detectives have a new lead to follow. Target squawking eastbound towards your car. During the course of the surveillances, we noticed a white male and that's when we identify James Randall. James Randall, Terry Joe Howard's live-in boyfriend, is the man who accompanied her to the tire store. While detectives check Randall's background, McDonald examines the tires from Howard's car. Treads are made up of geometric shapes called pitches. At first glance, the pitches seem to be all the same size, but in fact, their sizes vary widely. This is the key to tire identification. With the sequence of pitches, you can determine the exact location on the tire that made the imprint. McDonald can now tell which part of the tire left the print. But he still doesn't know if it was this tire or another of the same model. He needs to find a match point, a place on the print that could have been made only by this tire. So McDonald turns to a more subtle feature. The tiny cuts on the tire's surface. These cuts are called sipes. During manufacturing, the sipes are molded into the tires by small steel teeth. But occasionally, tires come out of the mold with a few sipes missing. Why? Because the metal teeth are fragile and sometimes break off. And when they do, a tire with a one-of-a-kind tread pattern is produced. McDonald finds a missing sipe in the tire print. He finds the same missing sipe in the same location on the right rear tire taken from Howard's truck. Now there is no doubt. The print at the crime scene was left by this tire. And there's more. By now, the background check on James Randall has come in. Randall's past isn't pretty. He served six years in a Massachusetts prison for sexual assault. He was also a suspect in a murder case, but investigators lacked enough evidence to indict him. In both crimes, the victims were strangled. Detectives now want to arrest Randall, but they know that unless they have enough evidence, they can't hold him. They need an airtight case and they know how to get it. Surveillance teams had often seen Howard and Randall walking a dog. We figured, well, let's send a couple detectives in to see if we can get some hairs from this dog. The investigative team comes up with another sting operation. Detectives Linda Hilliard and Stephanie Campbell pose as right women here. starting a dog bathing service. I looked and we walked. They come at a time when they know Howard will be home. She sees them coming up the walk. 
My name is Stephanie and this is Linda, and we're starting our own dog grooming business. Okay, let's see. Their offer of a free introductory flea bath is too good for Howard to refuse. Penny, yes, Miss Princess Penny. Let's see how she likes me. Does she like me all right? Very friendly. Hi, how are you? What a good girl. As Hilliard bathes the dog, Campbell keeps Howard distracted. Good. Hey. Can I comb At an you opportune hair? moment, Hilliard nice? pockets some hair. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. Oh, yeah. good After the bath, Terry Jo invites yeah. the women into the living room. Oh, yeah. 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 The detectives yeah. notice the color of the carpet. Yeah. It's pink, similar to the fibers found on the murder victims. Oh, As Hilliard yeah. chats with Terry Jo, Campbell yanks out a few fibers. Back in the lab, the carpet fibers and dog hairs taken from Howard's home are compared with those found on the murder victims. They match. That means the women had either been inside the house or had come into physical contact with Randall or Howard. Detectives now have the evidence they need. They decide to move in on James Randall. But as they approach him, he flees suddenly escaping into the nearby woods. A massive four-day manhunt can't flush him out. Finally, an exhausted and dirty James Randall shows up back at Howard's front door, where he is taken into custody by waiting sheriff's deputies. Terry Joe Howard knew nothing of Randall's crimes. The evidence pointed squarely to him. As the puzzle kept going together piece by piece, we were able to continually connect one after another back to him, which uh, in our mind and in the jury's mind uh, convinced them that no other person could have been involved uh, other than James Randall. Randall is tried and convicted of first-degree murder. He is currently awaiting execution on Florida's death row. Later, can science prove that this painting is a lost work by Leonardo da Vinci?